Welcome to Coco Sports New Japan G1 Climax Final Review. I know it's a couple days late, but I'm going to shoot with you. I'm just totally YouTube burnt out. Uh, this weekend I'm going on a family vacation, and I might, <laughs> I might consider doing YouTube a lot different. What a pain in the ass, but we'll save that to the end. Let's talk about the G1 Climax. Um, if you like in-ring action and you don't know what New Japan is, uh, please check it out. Check out New Japan World. I'll put the link down in the doobly-doo. I try to put tons of links down there. It's 999 yen. Um, that comes out to like 8 bucks, I think. I'm not really sure what it is, but it's less than the WWE Network. And the G1 was just... 19 pay-per-views in a row, uh, pay-per-view worthy match uh, events in a row. Um, every night of the tournament, there's at least one or two matches that Twitter was exploding about. I think I heard match of the year <laughs> like 976 friggin' times on Twitter uh, during the G1. But it, uh, it's totally, uh, totally worth, especially if you like the in-ring product. Um, so pl please do check it out. Overall, I'm giving uh, the G1 a huge win. I'm even giving uh, I'm giving uh, the final day a win, even though as a fan I was complete heartbroken. And I'll get into that a little bit. But um, I think also, in I'll just say it real quick. I think we need more fans of pro wrestling than experts. Um, I, I I I don't know disappointed i guess is the word and just english speaking japanese fans uh japanese pro rest fans not english speaking japanese people but english speaking Jap um you know it's just crazy it's like you can have a product and absolutely love it and still critique it it seems like nowadays you're like no you have to be all positive or all negative and it's just i guess the immaturity of younger fans i'm not really sure what the situation is but but it absolutely crazy but i'll get that towards the end let's let's break this down um over overall i give it a huge win i was as a fan completely heartbroken a little disappointing by the booking almost anyone that's been watching new japan for longer than 2 years 3 years um, has to say, New Japan has the best talent in the world, but sometimes you're let down by the booking. Newer fans will freaking hang you, especially if they don't actually live in Japan. If you say anything bad, I think the event was completely awesome. I think they have the best wrestlers in the world. I think it's the best wrestling in the world. I don't think it's the best booking in the world. Uh, I, that's it. And, um, and most... Japanese speaking fans agree. Most New Japan employees agree. Most fans that have been watching for more than three years agree. Nope, not on Twitter, not on Facebook with the younger English speaking fans. But I guess it's growing pain. Same thing with TNA and UFC fans. When something becomes popular, you feel like it has to be perfect because if it's not perfect, then you're just a d defender of the big company. I, I find it weird that, you know, it's an insult to be like, well, you sound like a WWE fan. Like, okay, that's that's insane. That's to me. But let's let's break it down. I'll I'll rant and vlog at the end of this. Um, all I all I gotta say is I am so. First off, I'm so happy I found out how Google Hangouts works. Holy shit, does YouTube suck balls at every fucking thing? Um, we might be looking for a new home. But hey, we're back on Google Hangouts, so it feels good. Who knows? YouTube sucks. Um, but. Yeah, so let's let's just break it down. We'll, we'll rant and rave later. All right, so the final day, um, I apologize for this being so late, um, but the final day of it, you had a couple of the six-man tags, which I'm not a big fan of. They, they, they hold – the athletes are trying, and the athletes are wrestling, and it's entertaining, but it just seems like on every level, when you have a six-man tag and it's not something like Dragon Gate, it really just seems like to be a waste – um, a lot of these matches were super short. You have Liger, Kamutsu, and Tanaka versus Taguchi, uh, Dorada, David Finley Jr. Taguchi gets the win in under seven minutes. Um, and Taguchi's really starting to rub me the wrong way. He's a really talented wrestler that seems to be relying on comedy just a little too much. You know, it's like, oh, I don't know, like... In pro wrestling, it's like, oh, I'm a, I'm a comedy wrestler now. Now I don't have to try. 
and I don't think so. You can still do comedy and still be a good wrestler. Um, Taguchi is an amazing wrestler, but the more and more I see him, I'm like, oh, all right, we get it. You, you like your butts. Um, <laughs> let's focus on wrestling. Um, Tenzin, um, Kojima, and Kojima, for his age, had such a great G1. And Captain New Japan versus Nagata, uh, Nakanishi, and Jay White. Tenzin gets the win with an Anaconda Vice on White. And then um, the biggest surprise ever, and I'm going to make a separate video before I go on vacation and take a little bit of break from YouTube. I, I, I matter of fact, I'm writing this down. I have to do a video of just an open letter to Elgin. There you go. Open letter to Elgin. Elgin was the biggest surprise ever. We, we talked about this throughout the tournament. There was so much pressure going in from Japanese fans, from Western culture fans of Elgin. And it just, there's not many points in pro wrestling where there's actually legit pressure. I think the last time there was legit pressure on anyone was AJ Styles last year's G1. And El Elgin, I think maybe because even though AJ Styles had a lot of pressure from Japanese-speaking fans last year at, at, at the G1 and he hit a home run, Elgin had worldwide pressure, in my opinion. And he just hit a home run. Um, he fights uh, Yoshihashi. Elgin wins with an Elgin bomb in a little under 10 minutes. I am reading results from uh, newjapankingdom.tumblr.com, and I put a couple live links down below. Um, so there you go. So, yeah, just Elgin was absolutely amazing. I hope it helps him. I hope the G1 shoots him to a whole new star level. I know, uh, you know, just from speaking to people in Japan, New Japan, and um, fans here, they they want him back. I, I would love to see Elgin come here full time. It just seems like this is his style of uh, promotion. So hopefully we get to see more of Elgin. Plus, you know, Nakamura versus Elgin never happens. Elgin versus Ishii. I mean, who the fuck doesn't want to see that rematch? Um, so yeah, I, I hope Elgin comes back. Uh, there was a big thing for Ring of Honor fans. Um, there was an announcement that the Ring of Honor and New Japan will be working closely and Ring of Honor will be coming to Japan. So that, that'll be really interesting and hopefully it keeps going. Um, but yeah, Elgin just, I, I think to be honest, you know, and people overuse this a, a term a lot. I think Elgin shocked the world, just absolutely shocked the world with this G1. Um, the match, this match wasn't his best match, but you know, it, I think it was a more of a thank you you know, and I know that, but it was cool. It was one-on-one. -on -one. I wish there was more one-on-one -on -one matches. Um, I'm not a big fan of six-man tags or tag team matches where they're not real tag teams. But I know everyone has their own style of wrestling. Uh, you got Yano, Ishii, Sakuraba versus Bad Luck Fail. Um, future President Bad Luck Fail. <laughs> uh, Takahashi and to to uh, Tonga. Sorry about that. I, I got going blind. Um, Ishii gets the win under nine minutes, but, um, I just want to give mad props to Tonga. Uh, as far as non-tournament match MVPs goes, Tonga's probably, probably there. I mean, he was just absolutely amazing. And I hope, you know, with ring, working with Ring of Honor and Tonga, uh, hopefully bad luck fail, Doc Gallows, like this G1 had since I think 1993, don't quote me on that. I, I could be wrong, but since the nine know this, New Japan is the best in the world right now in ring. They're best in Japan right now in in um, Japan. Uh, yeah, they're best in Japan right now. Right now, I apologize, stuttering there. But a lot of people don't know this. New Japan was hurting. There was a time where all Japan was number one. There was a time where pro pro rest, Japan pro rest was hurting. And I think a lot of newer fans don't realize that. And a lot of people are like, oh, why don't they just come to, you know, why don't they just go worldwide? And the problem is, it's like they haven't been number one in that long. Like uh, uh, right now, they are kicking so much ass in that ring. They are kicking so much ass in that. But it hasn't always been the case. There was a time where New Japan was suffering and the owners were passing it around and you know, they finally they finally fixed it and made it a lot better, but it, it, it's it's a bit crazy. So ho hopefully they just keep improving. But 
yeah, I, I, I would love to see a G1 where they get rid of the lower tier talent and replace it with better talent. Um, I thought this G1 was amazing. It did some great stuff. Um, New Japan is tooting their horn about 30,000 paid subscribers, which to me, for how good the product is, you, you should be doing a hell of a lot better. How popular, like, it just doesn't add up. You're number one in Tokyo. You're number one in Japan. Just how much population is in Tokyo, you know, 30,000 isn't a number you should be tooting your horn about. But at the same time, New Japan was really hurting at one time. So I'm glad they're number one and hopefully they keep it up. And, you know, it's okay to knock number one and be a huge fan. It's okay to critique it. Um, Homa, Naito, and Makabe versus Goto, Shibata, and Abushi. Abushi wins. Um, less than 11, 11 minutes. Phoenix Splash. Um, once again, it was just a regular six man tag. Um, right about, besides Elgin. I, I really think this first half was kind of bleh, to be honest with you. Um, but the second half is absolutely amazing and heartbreaking. But during intermission, there's a huge one, and Tenryu comes out and says that he will have his retirement match against Okada. And if you know Japanese, they were throwing some really funny insults around. Um, and... and it's going to happen on November 15th. And I, I had tickets to the G1 final, and I had tickets to the Friday event, um, day 17. But I have to get uh, clearance for my doctor to leave my house for long periods of time. And he wouldn't clear me for these two. And I was like, oh, man, I, I, I can't wait. And then when I heard it was <laughs> November 15th, that is my anniversary. And um, I, I've been trying to ask my wife, you know, I'm like, hey, hon. Let's go. Let's go see Okada retire a legend. Woo! You coming with me? And she's like, no, that's her anniversary. I'm like, come on. Who's coming with me? Come on, baby. Don't you love Japan? Duh. And she's like, no. I thought about getting her like a ring box and getting on one knee and proposing to her. And be like, hey, baby, look at these tickets. Now we can watch the retirement match. Who you want to come? But she, she was not buying it one bit. Not one bit. <laughs> You know what, my, my wife, you know, I don't know where her dedication is, you know, we would rather celebrate our marriage of 976 years by doing something romantic and spending time together, not marching out over a Japanese legend in Okada. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I question, I question where her priorities are. <laughs> so I won't be able to go to that one, guys. I'm grounded. <laughs> All right, let, let's go on to the second half, which was a hell of a lot better than the first half. It had some just amazing things. First off, they had the IWGP Junior Tag Team Championship match. Um, if this, I will too. Um, Lariato on Twitter got a shout out. I thought that was really cool. He's a really cool cat that just um, it lives, breathes, dies uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and he's the gift master. Um, it's crazy because, uh, I'll be watching a great move, check on Twitter and like the move just ended <laughs> and he's like, yep, here's the gift of that move. Here's the gift of that move. And the young buck shot it out. I enjoyed this match a lot. Um, I, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I always saw red dragon as, uh, the wolves or American wolves kind of like, eh, whatever. You're just fucking their little brothers. Who gives a shit? And I always respected them in ring. But my respect grew from them a lot. This 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 match was very entertaining. Had a lot of uh, cruiserweight type spots. Some some people though um, don't enjoy that. I mean, personally, I like the cruiserweight style of wrestling. But overall, I enjoyed it. Um, the Young Bucks lost. I was a little heartbroken. But you know, um, Red Dragon is winning me over. I, I I think Red Dragon might be one of the best in ring in ring um, tag teams. I just hope that they find something more entertaining. And I know I'm going to get some heel heat for saying that, but it's always like, all right, you're the wolves, baby little brothers. You're amazing in the ring, but you know, so, but I'm, I'm glad that they won the tag titles, but I was still a little heartbroken, even though I kind of hate bullet club because I'm a team chaos guy. And I think a lot of bullet club fans can't name all the members of bullet club. <laughs> it's like, it's like the 90s Chicago bulls all over again. Pippin. Jordan and uh, the other guys. 
Uh, Motherfucker, if you don't know who Will Purdue is, you can't be a Bullet Club member. I got my fucking analogies mixed up there, but moving on. Um, but yeah, it was an amazing match. 18 minutes. Um, the second half had longer matches. Then you had the IWGP uh, Junior Heavyweight Championship match. I think this is a much watch match if you like cruiserweight things. I think Ricochet. I think it's just one of my favorite wrestlers right now. Like, you know, a lot of times I pass the torch to different guys. Uh, for the record, Ricochet retweeted me. Oh, I'm going to give myself a Barry Horowitz. And Ricochet just does some amazing things. This match was just cruiserweight greatness at its highest level. Plus, it was great to see Ricochet. For those that don't know, and I know some people um, – are a bit dicks about this, but you got to realize not everyone follows wrestling as much as you do. Um, Ricochet and Prince Puma are the same person, and I'm just a huge fan of him. And the 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 moves he does over the turnbuckles to the outside it, it, that's probably my favorite move all of in pro wrestling. I, I just find it to be absolutely amazing. Um, I thought this match was. Great. I thought uh, I th I was rooting for Ricochet, but Kushida put on one hell of a match. And it's just cruiserweight wrestling at its best, or X Division wrestling. I don't know. Different people call it different things. And that's my favorite style uh, of pro wrestling. And to me, it, it was just amazing. Um, but yeah, so Kushida does win with a hoverboard lock, and it's his first successful title defense. And hopefully, I know. I hope there's a season two of Lucha Underground, but with that said, I hope they give him the freedom to be Ricochet in New Japan. Um, and not a lot, but can you imagine Ricochet in the G1? That would be just man. Um, it's just the G1 this year was amazing, but next year it could. Could you just imagine a dream team of a G1? They have the talent, you know. It would just be – it would be amazing. Uh, you know, I don't know if everyone likes it. I think some people needs a Doc Gallows. People needs a Bad Luck Fail. I don't know. Why don't we just go 1G1 where it's the best wrestlers in the world? Um, then you got special a special six-man tag match. I was kind of pissed that this was the semi-main event. I was kind of pissed that a lot of these wrestlers didn't get singles um, runs. But at the same time, I'm sure they want to get everyone on their card. And there's a lot of main eventers. The special six-man tag match was Okada, Bennett, and Tevin um, from Ring of Honor versus Styles, Anderson, and Doc Gallows. Uh, Styles, this is, this is the big one. It's, it's only about an 11-minute match, according to uh, NewJapanKingdom.tumblr.com. It's uh, 11 minutes and 16 seconds. And it was an enjoyable match. But the big shock was not that Styles won, but who got the, who got the pin on? He beat Okada with a Styles clash. I, I was shocked. I was heartbroken. I'm a huge Okada fanboy, and I know, you know, nowadays – listen – I can't stress this enough. I might actually make this channel new slogan this. We need more fans and less experts. Um, uh, yeah, I was just completely shocked by that. And uh, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe, you know, there's rumors that Styles, Styles beats Okada before um, Tanahashi cashes in. So it should be interesting. Um, I just wish they booked a little bit differently and protected their talent a little bit better. But, he, he, you know, I th like I said, I can't stress this enough. Everything's amazing. It's just I, I think if you put this booking in any other company, people complain. It's just they have the best wrestlers in the world. Um, then you got the G Climax 25 final. And I knew, I knew Tanahashi was going to win. I, I just fucking knew it. You're just like, all right, whatever. And I fucking knew, and I kid you not, I still enjoyed the match. It's a five-star match. I tweeted this out, and I believe it. New Japan is like the Twilight Zone. It's like, we call it the New Japan Zone, where it's a funny situation because newer fans don't get it, and I understand. Um, but Tanahashi is booked like John Cena, except... He has five-star matches. So if you're a newer fan of New Japan, just imagine John Cena being pushed the same way he's pushed, but with five-star matches. Like, you want to complain, but at the same time, he's such a great fucking wrestler. You're like, God damn you, Tanahashi. It's such a fucking weird feeling. 
It, it is such a weird feeling. It was a 32-minute match, and it started off a bit slow. And when it starts off a bit slow, as a fan that likes the Cruiserweight style, and they do a slow build, especially in the main events, they always do a slow build. Um, as a fan, I, I always get worried about the slow build because I'm like, oh my God, this is so hyped up and they're not going 100 miles per hour at once. But, you know, just like Okada and Nakamura, the you know, the day before and, um, you know, this match, Nakamura, uh, Tanahashi, I, I just thought, yeah, they, they slow build you so good because you're so pumped up and you're like, oh my God, is this going to live up to the hype in my head? What's going on? Why are they going so slow? And then they build up to it and you're just like, oh my God, they did it again. And it's just such a great way. And even though I had a sad feeling that Tanahashi was going to win and he did, they had some great close moments. I, I think, you know, Nakamura should have won this G1. I go back to Wrestle Kingdom 9. I think Okada should beat Tanahashi. And it's just, it's one of those things, it's such a weird feeling because you get mad at the booking, but Tanahashi's such a great wrestler. And, and, and it's funny because, <laughs> you know, I don't know where it's going. I, I know they announced, I think he has to defend his briefcase, which I think is so fucking stupid. Um, I has to defend his briefcase against, uh, he has to defend it against Naito, which, you know, and they have to defend it against Naito and they also have to defend it against bad luck fail. Could you imagine bad luck fail being in a main event of wrestle kingdom? I, I mean, could you not it, it, call the suicide hotline because someone's going to have to watch me if that happens. <laughs> oh man. Um, but yeah, so it could change. It looks like, you know, after his retirement match on the 15th, O'Connor will also have, not his retirement, but a uh, legend. But um, it also looks like he'll probably have to defend the title against AJ Styles. And the rumors are going crazy and people are talking about what could happen, what can't happen. Um, so Tanahashi wins the 25th G1 Climax. Congratulations. Oh, and another thing. Um, they had a special announcement, like a guest. And I was like, whatever, dude. You already had Denry. Who the fuck else can you have? You already had Ring of Honor. Who else can you have as a special guest? Uh, and I was just sitting back like, fuck you guys. I, I don't know. I was kind of like critical. And I remember like, they're like, we got a special guest coming out. And I was like, I don't give a fuck about your special guest, New Japan. I don't know why. I was just in an asshole mood. And then Chono and Muda came out, and I started marking the fuck out. It was just a funny, like, bitter fan to fucking marking out moment. I was like, who gives a shit about your special guest? Who are you going to? Chono and Muda! Oh, my fucking God! G1 Finals was amazing! <laughs> The roller coaster of emotions that is Dave Coco watching New Japan. All right, so there you go. Overall, I give it a huge win. Um, yeah, all right, and I'm gonna have to be ending this soon. But the big thing is, um, uh, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, yeah, the, the big thing that I just wanted to vlog about is I am so the review is over. In the comments, put win, loss, or tie. Now I'm just going to talk about living in Japan for a few seconds before I have to head to work. I'm a little YouTube burned out. <laughs> it's funny because like, I was like, yeah, I have to work. I don't have to YouTube. And I'm like, wait, that's not the way my hobby's supposed to be. Damn you, YouTube. Damn you. Um, but, you know, I, I remember like normally I just ignore people. But sometimes you, you, you get an argument on Twitter and it just fucking bugs you. And, and it's kind of crazy because there's so many fans, English-speaking fans that don't live in Japan that like they're book smart, but they just haven't fucking experienced like everything. And like it's weird because there's no fans. And, and I love being a fan in Japan because here's the thing. I could say something crazy. I could say something like mm, Tanahashi's not a good wrestler. And 99.9% .9 of the world will disagree with that. And, and, and that makes sense. But you know, like in Japan, you can have an opinion and you can go to a Japanese pro rest bar and you can talk about it. Like there is no winning in being an expert. It's about conversation and educating yourself. I think, you know, especially the newer fans that um, outside of Japan, they feel the pressure to be experts. Like some people are like, you mispronounce Japanese names. Yeah, I'm just talking about it. You could do a review on YouTube and not know how to pronounce everyone's. You could do anything. I don't understand like this 
this thing of you can't be a fan. Like, it's so weird because, like, uh, um, you know, I, I'm talking to English-speaking people, and they're like, oh, I can't fucking believe Like, the one per- one thing that was really popular as soon as the G101 off the air is you don't have a right to complain. Like, that's insane. First off, New Japan and Japanese um, fans see it as a sport. So if your guy loses, you have the right to complain. Matter of fact, um, I, I was at Wrestle Kingdom and we had this super nice old lady super fan. You know, the one that squeaks that everyone in America hates, but she's such a kind person. And she was squeaking away for Naito at Wrestle Kingdom 9. And I just remember when Night- AJ Styles beat Naito, she was so upset. She just went to the bathroom and cried. And, and I'm just like, dude, there's just something magical about being a fan. Where like then you go to English speaking people and everyone's an expert. How dare you complain about that? And I, I don't understand that attitude of you can't critique. I, I just think first off the word expert is completely abused. Second off, it's like everyone goes into a debate about opinion like it's fact. It, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Like um, you know, and then like you know, I, I have I Japan. I Japan. Oh, he, he's my, he's a guy that runs my Jeff. Ja- Japanese companies basically makes my life a lot easier. Like I remember the first time he um, Okada lost or Nakamura lost. I remember because he went to G1 finals and I didn't. And he's like, "Oh, hey, do you want to go to a five star restaurant in sweatpants? Do you?" And he always knows what to cheer me up. He's like, "Yeah, I'd like to go to a five star restaurant in sweatpants." And he picked me up, bought me dinner and stuff. And it was just funny because like in Japan, there's like fan. It's okay to be a fan. But, like, outside of Japan, you have to know everything to be an expert. And it's just kind of douchey. Like, I, we had this one cat who's like, you're a fucking idiot. And I'm like, okay, why am I an idiot? And this is how I fucking believe. And he blocked me and then got, got a smarter friend to fucking make his point. And I was just like, I try to use social media and YouTube as if it's a real person. Like, you talk to them as if it was. Can you imagine the way trolls act? Like, the big thing is, you're a fucking idiot. Well, I'm not an idiot. Why do you think I'm an idiot? Blocked! It's like, can you imagine that interaction? Or, like, they always come up to you and, like, will leave a mean comment. Like, you're a fucking asshole. And, like, hey, buddy, you're a fucking asshole. Like, and then they turn into the victim. I just, I, I don't fucking get it. But the, the point of this story is, um, New Japan, the actual company, invited me to dinner the next night that's why this is so late and i I went with my friends i went there we went to a perez bar ate steak and i I don't carry around the cell phone because i'm addicted to the internet a smartphone i don't carry a smartphone because i'm addicted to the internet but like i i japan was like poking fun of me he's scrolling through the tweets the response he's like you're an idiot i know nothing about new japan meanwhile i'm sitting with new japan employees and they're, they're like, oh, we'd like to hear about your opinion. And I'm just like, wow, what a fucking weird-ass world. <laughs> you only, could, only in real life could you be sitting with employees. I keep saying employees because I don't want to fucking tell them who they are. And I don't know if I have permission to. Where they're buying you food, asking you for your opinion, while giving you free swag, a.k.a. free stuff. And people are like, you know nothing about this company. And then you look at you look at the Twitter response, you're like, yep, I know nothing about this company. Then look over and see New Japan employees, and they're like, what did you think about this? And they gave the reasons why they're they're booking Tanahashi the way they are. But I just found it to be hilarious and how, you know, I'm just so happy as a New Japan fan that I actually live in Japan. And it, it just cracks me up that, you know, Everyone needs to be an expert and no one needs to be a fan. And, and it, you're just like, man. And, and the thing that started all this was, I was like, oh, if you, if you think, and I, I believe this, I stand by this statement. I'm like, if you think Tanahashi versus Okada is good booking, then you have no reason booking wise, not in ring wise to complain about John Cena or Randy Orton. And I told this to New Japan employees. I told this to Japanese pro wrestling fans that have been watching for 20, 30 years. And they're like, yeah, that makes sense. But on Twitter, they're like, you're a fucking idiot. (laughs) I've actually told the real Tanahashi this. And he's like, yeah, but you think I wrestle better than him? (laughs) I'm like, of course. Um, So I, I just find it funny. And I just hope as New Japan grows and, you know, just the internet and all that evolves that we talk to each other like we would in the same room. 
And if you do leave comments, just be like, hey, that's how I talk to you in, this, in the same room. I, I just I just think that should be like a universal rule. Because could you imagine? You're a fucking idiot, blocked. <laughs> that's, the, that's the equivalent of walking into a room. You're a fucking idiot, locking the door and running away. It's just, it's, it's insane. I, I just thought the story itself, and granted, I don't know if anyone else finds it interesting, but I thought it was funny that I, because I, Japan, even though he's such a great guy, he knows how to poke the bear. He's like, hey, Dave, <laughs> how you doing? You obviously know nothing about New Japan. I'm like, of course, of course. Uh, but yeah, I, it's an amazing wrestling. Um, the booking is questionable at times, but the longer you watch it, the shorter you've watched it, the newer the fan, you won't notice these things. It's usually longer fans and all that. And it's funny because I even asked, I, I was so angry because I Japan was just poking me with the fucking stick. And I even asked, I was with four New Japan employees. I said, oh, um, you know, I'm just having an argument. And granted, we weren't talking about pro wrestling too much, mostly business bullshit. But I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm doing this on Twitter and fucking this asshole thinks that, you know, calling it, saying that Randy Orton and John Cena is booked the same way as Tanahashi and Okada, except that it's, you know, better in the ring. Three, three of the four New Japan employees fucking... They just laughed and said no comment. One said, "Yeah, I could see that," and the others were like, "Ah!" And then I fucking I was I went fucking from person to person, and there was about twenty five pro wrestling fans, two bookers of other promotions, not New Japan. And I was like, "Hey, dude, I'm having an argument on Twitter. Well, let's fucking deal with this in real life." Hey, hey, do you think Okada and Tanahashi are booked just like John Cena and Randy Orton? 23 out of 25 people that I've asked that to, and they saw the G1, been watching pro wrestling for years, without a doubt, said, yeah. There was one that said, ah, I don't see it. And his friend's like, really? And then one guy said, nope, I don't see it. And then it's just crazy. Then you're like, oh, you're a fucking idiot for thinking that way. And I'm just like, all right, all right, <laughs> all right. So for that and this funny story, I'm just grateful to live in Japan and be a new Japan fan. And listen, you can love a product and still critique it. Um, something's happened weird that's online that if you are a fan or love the product, you can't critique it. This happens a lot with TNA fans. It happens a lot with um, younger John Cena fans. And it happens a lot with English-speaking uh, New Japan fans. You can love New Japan and still critique it. And you could still – and I don't know. It's just – it's weird of how, how much – it is. So overall, I give the G1 a huge win. I give the final night a huge win. Um, I'm a little upset with the booking, a little heartbroken as a fan. But, you know, it is what it is. I actually don't know if I'm going to go to Wrestle Kingdom this year. It's just, if it's Tanahashi Okada again, I'll probably still go. But I'm going to question it. Oh, probably a last second purchase. I mean, it, it's still going to be one hell of a match, but... For those I've been watching for a while, and it's so funny too, because like I, when I started um, two, three, four years ago reviewing, I've been watching for a real long time. I remember saying, "Oh, half the audience gets really pissed off that it's Tanahashi and Okada, and some people love seeing rematches over and over and over because of how great the wrestling is, and it's split." And you know, <laughs> nowadays you're just like, "Okay, that was four years ago we were saying that. Now it's a bit much." But the, the New Japan people told me why. It's and it makes sense business wise, but at the same time, as a fan, you're just like, ah, oh, this kind of hurts. All right, so um, like, comment, subscribe. Um, let me see. I doubt there's any live comments. Google, Google's been beating us up a lot lately. Um, how's life on your side of the planet? Thank you, Facebook. It's not too bad. Just fighting the good fight. Appreciate, appreciate it. What the live comments? Like, how's life on your side of the planet? Well, I have to head off to work, ladies and gentlemen. So please like, comment, subscribe because, you know, I don't know how Hangouts is going to work. Um, um, I couldn't find Hangouts on YouTube. And the new the new um, system that YouTube has in place um, it is absolutely horrible for what we do. Hangouts is a million times better. So hopefully, hopefully we can survive this YouTube. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm just glad I'm taking a vacation. And I, you know what? I probably would have not done this. I, I've been feeling a little shitty. But I reviewed every day of the G1. So it would be kind of weird not to do the final day. Like, fuck it. I'm going home.
going out to go hang out at pro rest bars and bitch about Tanahashi and English speaking wrestling fans. See you next week. <laughs> All right. Check out CocoSports.net. Uh, hopefully I'll get a lot of uh, shows done before my vacation. And um, yeah, with that, I am over. Bum, 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 I can't find the button. Bum, 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 bum.